What is up my friends? Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the violas specifically. Last week we talked about the violins, how they're the highest section of the orchestra, so now we're taking it a step further and going with the violas, which are kind of their next, uh, the, the big sister, their or big brother, you know? And uh, before we really get into that though, I want to give you my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound guide. It's totally free, but it goes through 10 steps, that, 10 really essential elements that you need to know in order to make your mock-ups and your virtual productions um, stand out, um, make them sound professional, and give them a, just a clear sheen you know, and stand out among the rest. So it's totally free if you want to check it out in the box below. It'll take you straight there. And I think you'll instantly improve your mockups if you grasp these 10 things. So let's dive into the violas really quickly here. In terms of the open strings, it reaches down a fifth below the violins. So C2, G2, D3, and A3 are the open strings. So you can play them without using the left hand to change the notes, right? I usually think of the violas as a bridge between the violins and the cellos myself. Um, I tend to use the violins and the cellos the most for like melodies and stuff. So uh, the violas are kind of like the harmonic bridge in most cases for me personally. Um, in terms of the actual sound, it's not as sonically resonant and open as the violin and cello. Maybe that's also a contributing factor to why I, let, I like to use the violin and cello more for parts that stand out in the front. But the, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, diss the violas too much because they play a very important role in the orchestra. They also have a very dark, warm, and mellow sound, which I really appreciate. Uh, they, um, yeah, it's just a character. They have a very re uh, warm kind of character to them, which I really like. And in terms of the, the vocal range, I like to think of them as assuming the role of the alto, which is like the lower female voice as well. In terms of their practicality, um, I like to use them for accompaniment patterns, ostinati, like maybe in combination with cellos or violins, but also for performing counterpoints, like counterpoint lines, uh, pads, you know, holding longer sustains and more, right? So let's dive into some pros and cons for using the violas. As the bigger brother of the violin or bigger sister, the viola boasts a warmer and rounder sound than the violin, naturally. Because they're not used as often for lead melodies, however, you can really take advantage of their sound. So, you know, the violins are so familiar to our ears, um, we can use the violas, which have a huskier and darker sound, they can present a really nice alternative to the violins. Even though they can't play nearly as high, they can still produce a really warm and beautiful sound compared to the violins. Also, they lend a beautiful accompanying voice to the violin cello sections as we talked about before, and they fill in the holes where appropriate to gel the arrangement together. So my preferred purposes are really to use the violas to fill in the harmonic holes. If there's like a big gap between violins one and two and the cello, I'll usually use the violas, maybe even split them into VC to play several notes to gel the overall string arrangement together. Also, because they're not as resonant and bright, their huskier tone prevents them from being in the spotlight as often. So that's just a built-in feature into the viola, the, the general sound of it is not as protruding, let's say, as the violin and the cello. So naturally, you could see that as a con, and that's why they're not usually used too much in um, exposed lead melodies, you could say. So what are my favorite ways to use violas? Number one, to bridge the violins and cello with counter melodies or harmonic lines as we talked about. Number two, as a solo instrument that presents a nice alternative to the violin and the cello. Um, sometimes I do do this, like Tableau Solo Strings has a really beautiful solo viola. I tend to use that in some of my music, in my song, All I Have in the instrumental there. Uh, in the middle section, that's the tableau solo strings viola. And then uh, once again, near the end, I have the solo viola kind of playing some lines among the vocals. So I really like using it there. And then finally, to double the bassoon or the French horn, as uh, they kind of have similar timbres in a way where the viola is warmer and huskier. So the bassoon and French horn, they also have warmer sounds. So when you play them together, they kind of create this nice body of sound at the same time. So those are my personal preferred ways of uh, using the violas. You probably have your own as well. Um, please let me know in a comment below if you enjoy using the violas. If you don't, let me know why as well. And before you go, again, I wanna give you my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound. And again, it's a free guide going over 10 tips that you really need to know in order to take your orchestral mockups to the next level. Um, really important to internalize those things like mixing and balancing and knowing the timbres and all of that. We explain those in depth into this guide. So. Uh, check it out for free in the link below. It'll take you straight there. And next week, we'll kind of talk about the cello. We'll move on to the next section, one of my favorites in the orchestra. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.